Whoa. Whoa. Today we'll be making crazy colorful kaleidoscopes and blender shader notes, like all the stuff you see playing on your screen during this short intro to the tutorial. Hey folks and fine people of the Blenderverse, my name is Chris. You are watching the Toxic Tuber Artsy Fartsy animation channel with occasional tutorial, general knowledge drop and this tutorial will unleash a conjucopia of mind melting colors on all of your screens and maybe even paint your mood in a brighter color. Isn't this all we artists want to do? We'll start simple with a seamless image texture arranged in circles. This needs the most preparations as you need a seamless base image for that. Then we'll throw an image texture into the color shredder and turn it into a good looking kaleidoscope. And finally we'll go totally procedural in Blender shader notes and play with Blender internal textures to make your screen ooze colors and we have way too many sliders to play around with and create endless variations of mandala-esque kaleidoscope loops. Let's go! Working with nodes in Blender is way easier with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. You don't have to download anything, Node Wrangler comes bundled with Blender. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type Node into the search bar and it should appear already. Check to activate, save the changes and we are ready to go. Let's start by making room for what we want to do and reset the camera position and rotation with Alt R and Alt G. Move the cam up on the set axis to look down on the origin, numpad 0 to jump into the camera view and we prepare a lot of things in the outliner now. Rendering on the GPU is faster than on the CPU, cycles looks a bit better than Eevee and current Blender versions give great results for kaleidoscopes that we will do with 50 samples or less. The methods described in this tutorial work best on a square ratio, but of course you can set it to anything you like and that looks good to you. Add a plane, scale it to fill the whole camera screen, open a new window for the shader editor and add a material to the plane. Ctrl T is the Node Wrangler shortcut to add the complete image texture setup to the selected principal shader. Load in a seamless texture. To work along you can find a download link to this image file in the video description. Is this worth a thumb up already? Click it. Plug the image color into the emission color of the BSDF shaders so we have a shiny bright image. Scaling and moving the image proves that it's seamless and we are good to go. Control Shift Left Click is the Node Wrangler shortcut to preview a node in shader nodes. The UV coordinates of the plane along the X and Y axis are basically a red and green gradient. To get to the same level coming from the generated coordinates we use a vector math node and subtract 0.5 on each dimension. The black dot in the middle now has a value of 0, 0 and is like the origin in a coordinate system. A gradient texture set to radial now generates a gradient from 0 to 1 around this origin point, while a vector math node set to length now generates a gradient from 0 to 1 from the center outwards. Feeding these two gradients into a combined XYZ node gives us a vector that wraps the image around the origin point. This is a basic polar coordinate setup. Let's add some math to the gradients from 0 to 1 to have more control over the polar mapping. A converter math node set to multiply after the radial gradient lets us stretch and scale the texture around the round mapping. Using the truncate function of the math node gives us only integer values as factor for the multiplication so the texture is always completely mapped and seamless and this is what we want. A multiplication on the second factor of course stretches the texture along the radius of this quasi circle. To make life easier select all nodes between the texture coordinate and the image texture node and hit ctrl G to put them all in a node group. Plug both the truncated and the normal scaling factor into the input and name them accordingly in the end panel. Number of repetitions and scaling for example. You can exit a node group with tab. And now it's time to animate. We can animate the Y component of a vector math node set to add after the new node group to give our radial image array a growing or shrinking appearance. You can keyframe this or be really clever about it and automate it. 
To access only the Y component of the vector math node, we need a combine XYZ node before it. A value node fed through two math nodes goes into the Y. Type hashtag frame into the value node and it will output the current frame of the animation. Dividing the frame number by 48 will loop the animation after 48 frames or 2 seconds. A multiplication with 1 will keep the animation shrinking towards the center while multiplying with minus 1 will expand the animation outwards. This is the direction factor so to say. Well, this seems to work really good already and it's really fun to play around with. But what if we want to rotate the whole madness? To do that, we need to go back into the polar mapping node group. I screwed up on the recording a bit, but you just need to recreate what you see on screen now. The truncated number of repetitions goes into a multiply node. This is divided by 360 degrees and that value is added after the multiply node after the gradient texture. Plug the top value of the multiply node into the group input and call it rotation and that's what it is in degrees. Oh yeah, you can have a lot of fun with this setup already can also lead to strange, out-of-this-world realizations. Believe it or not, I had to remeasure it a few times myself, but this green leaf animation you see right now takes 420 degrees to form a full circle. Crazy! But anyways, we can do better than that and cut up and totally destroy an input image and make more colorful, crazy, rotating kaleidoscope animations. And this is what we'll do now in the second chapter of this tutorial. If you are just jumping through the tutorial, you are out of luck. We need the polar coordinates node group we made in the first chapter now to expand on it. So we start by naming the node group accordingly. Polar coordinates or polar mapping is a good name for it and you can easily find it when you put it in your asset browser. So after using a seamless texture in chapter 1, we want to make it easier to use with any image texture but that is harder to do in shader nodes. For this example we use this tasty pizza render. Oh, delicious. Using the polar mapping on any image texture wraps it around circular already. To make it look more interesting and more like a kaleidoscope, we need to jump into the node group again to work on the details there. For one, the image is flipped. To fix that, simply multiply the gradient texture by minus one. Another math node after that, set to ping pong with a scaling factor of 0 0.5, mirrors the image texture just like a kaleidoscope would do and it looks more like the colors belong together and are seamless even if it's just a random image. Another math node set to ping pong on the mapping that goes from the center outwards blends the image edges along this axis as well. For cool animation effects, we expose this value to the node group. You can expose the other ping pong value as well, but I think keeping it fixed at 0 0.5 looks way better than changing it. After naming the new node group factor, I recommend clamping it between 0 and 1 for best results. Just having this setup running, playing with the sliders and watch all these beautiful forms appear and colors morph around is great fun already. I spent quite some time compositing with the colors, made a setup like this, which includes a lot of glare notes and a lens dispersion at the end and just a few more notes. I managed to turn the pizza image into this sparkly shiny kaleidoscope. Talking about the whole compositing setup would add another 5 minutes to the tutorial, but nobody got time for that, maybe in another tutorial. Rather let's continue with the next chapter. To make good use of Blender internal textures, we will sooner or later feed them through a color ramp. So before we get into that, let me add to what we did by now, that you can feed the random image from the previous chapter through a color ramp as well. And here are some examples of how that looks. But I didn't render that out as an animation with compositing and everything. So let's get to the totally procedural kaleidoscope animations. 
and you followed the tutorial up to here, you might have guessed it already. To make totally procedural kaleidoscopes, of course we need a procedural texture. For this example I use a Voronoi texture. Please feel encouraged to do all kinds of experiments with all kinds of different textures. Of course our new texture gets the vector from the polar mapping and we pipe the output through a U saturation node and a color ramp. This works pretty well already, so it's up to you to choose your own colors for your own kaleidoscope animation and play around with all the sliders we created up to now. Switching the procedural texture dimension to 4D exposes yet another value to play around with. After playing around with it some more, you will sooner or later discover there are so many different variations it's hard to put into words. But this leads to a problem. When you move an image texture along one of the UV coordinates, it just repeats after passing through once. But procedural textures are the exact opposite. They are endless and always different the further you go down their mapping plane. This leads to a probably infinite amount of variations. But this also means it is impossible to loop it out of the box. So a big shout out and thank you to the Blender note guard Arendale. He recently released a very in-depth tutorial about how to loop procedural textures. Actually this inspired me to make all these kaleidoscope animations. So check out his very good tutorials about all kinds of procedural topics. Thank you Aaron. Keep doing what you're doing. Let's start by going into the node group once more and we add a converter mix node set to float. So we can use the polar mapping for both normal image textures and procedural textures and can turn the ping pong effect on and off with a switch. Of course we need to expose both mix factors to the node group and clamp their value between 0 and 1. Putting a math node set to truncate before the mix factor avoids weird in-between values. We did this because we want to turn off both ping pong effects now. Add a converter separate XYZ node and a combine XYZ node. When piping through the corresponding values nothing changes. Then plug two vector math nodes set to scale after the polar mapping and before the separate XYZ. The first one gets a math node set to truncate into the scaling factor, scale it by 1 for now and scale the second one by 2 pi or just type tau into the scaling value. Now make some room for 4 math nodes between the separate and the combine xyz. And now let's loop the texture. Plug the x value of the separate xyz node into a math node set to sine and into another math node set to cosine. And we do the same for the y value, both into a sine and into a cosine math node. And now one after the other plug the sine into the x, cosine into the y and the second sine into the z value of the combine xyz. And the last cosine goes into the w of your 4D texture. That's all there is to it. Now the procedural texture loops after 2 pi or 1 rotation. And now it's up to you to do all kind of funny experiments in color and form. And here is your usual call to action. Mmm, do something? Click all those buttons on the YouTubes. So what can I say, with this setup the sky is the limit. You can mix all kinds of textures and forms and colors. Or instead of using static images you pipe a video or an image sequence into that. And you can do this endlessly recursive by rendering a kaleidoscope with this setup and using the resulting animation again as an image sequence to form another kaleidoscope from it. You can get mad details with this. And best of all, you can recreate this in geometry nodes and screw up all kinds of meshes and weird geometry you pipe through it. But showing you this is totally out of scope for this tutorial. Rather use this tutorial as a base for your own experiments. Hit me up on social media and show me what you do with it. Mastodon is really cool when you give it a chance. Well, thank you for your interest so far. Maybe you are interested in one of the other videos you see on your screen right now. And then I can only say goodbye. See you on the other side. TT out.